So, hello everybody. I would like to welcome uh, you, the followers of the uh, Facebook page Slovak Chrome Club and also the Association of Patient Organizations from France. And definitely I would like to welcome Bastien. He's from French uh, organization. So, welcome Bastien. Thank you very much, Veronica. Uh, nice to see you again. Thank you uh, very much. So today we are going to talk about the current situation uh, regarding IBD patients and COVID in Slovakia and France. We will see if there are any challenges, if there are any differences, any similarities, and hopefully we will bring you uh, some very useful information just to make sure that, of course, some people, they don't speak English very properly, then you will find out under the, this video the information uh, in Slovak also regarding questions and answers what we are talking about. So, first of all, when we take into consideration that nowadays the situation with COVID is not very, uh, let's say, uh, positive because there are more than 2 million cases uh, worldwide, then what about uh, France? Uh, tell me what are the numbers regarding France, Bastien? Um, I think like yeah, in your country, the figures are, are evolving uh, um, quite often. Um, so that's figures we have for France is that we have, um, uh, let me check, we have 109,000 um, confirmed cases and more than 18,600 deaths. Um, and just to uh, tell you, we have 400 more cases in 24 hours and uh, almost 800 uh, more deaths in uh, 24 hours too. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. Yeah, then definitely in Slovakia the number is um, lower, but uh, it uh, of course comes from the lower number of uh, the citizens in Slovakia. So in Slovakia until now we are having 1089 cases mm -hmm. and uh, uh, total deaths or total recovered uh, because we have to be also a little bit positive and then in Slovakia like it's 213 people who recovered but uh, also some uh, people uh, died so it's 11. Um, mm -hmm. But when we are coming back to our associations, because we are volunteering there, uh, can you please tell me some basic information about your association, uh, about how many years uh, do you exist and so on? Okay. Um, so the French association is called uh, AFA uh, and um, it exists since uh, 1982. Um, and I'm volunteering in this association since uh, 2015, uh, so five, uh, five years now. And it's uh, quite difficult to sum up all the activities of the association in a few words because we are doing uh, a lot of stuff. But um, that's good. <laughs> the main area we areas we are uh, dealing with is that we are bringing information and support to to patients, uh, thanks to different um, phone hotlines, uh, local meetings, conferences, and uh, also workshops. Um, we are we also inform through our website, um, which we. Um, have updated uh, it uh, quite recently, so it's uh, our new website. Um, we also have uh, a magazine and uh, of course uh, social media, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, every main social media. Um, we have also developed um, um, a web platform called uh, Mickey Connect which is a platform which patients and relatives uh, can learn uh, many things about IBD, about the disease itself, but also about uh, nutrition, uh, travel, uh, how to manage stress and uh, work and stuff like that. Um, we have also a network of dietitians mm -hmm. and a social worker and um, to, to answer the questions of uh, members of our, our association. Um, we organize also uh, states for teenagers, for families, 
to um, give them the opportunity to meet each other and share experiences, uh, questions, feelings. And it's uh, very, very nice uh, for, uh, for the participants uh, in the feedback we, we have. Um, and we have also a big activity um, in the support to research, uh, thanks to grants we are giving each year. Uh, each year we are giving um, a global amount of uh, 200,000 euros uh, um, in grants uh, for, uh, for the research. And um, we are also doing uh, health uh, lobbying um, to bring the patient's voice in the uh, health uh, authorities. Wow, <laughs> it is really <laughs> very nice uh, answer and uh, I think you are doing really wide range of uh, activities and uh, then congratulations because it's really nice what you are doing. Maybe we can learn something from you. Uh, yeah, and then just excuse me, probably I didn't catch just the number. How many IBD patients generally are in France? Um, in France, we have approximately 250,000 uh, IBD uh, people. And in the association, we have uh, 8,500 8, uh, members. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And that's definitely, again, uh, different uh, as far as I mentioned uh, previously that in Slovakia we have less citizens. So uh, when we were talking about Slovakum Club, uh, we are working since 1993. And uh, in uh, Slovakia, generally, we are having approximately 15,000 IBD patients. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the uh, number of members in Slovak Home Club is a bit, a bit little bit lower. It's uh, approximately 300, 400, it depends. But what we have in common is uh, the range of activities as you do. Then, for example, I can mention uh, educational seminars, conferences, uh, also some stays for not yeah teenagers or we are doing it for children and also mm -hmm. for seniors so yeah something we are uh, having in common and uh, definitely uh, what uh, the next uh, thing what we do as you is that uh, we are also publishing the magazine like each year it is maybe you are publishing it uh, um, monthly or, or um, twice not a year monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, it, it depends of, uh, of the year, but we have between three and four magazines per year. Okay, nice, nice. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is something also about uh, our association. Uh, when we uh, talk now about, like nowadays, definitely we can't meet, we can't be in contact. So can you tell me uh, what uh, activities uh, do you, or are you doing nowadays? Uh, when, yeah, you know, we are in the social distancing and we can't meet. Mm. Uh, just before answering your, your question, um, uh, can you tell me about the um, organization of your association? I mean, uh, do you have only volunteers? Do you have employees in the, uh, in the association? Or many are, are you uh, inside the association to run it? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the question. So yeah, I'm the president of Slovak Crown Club. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been with uh, the association uh, approximately four years, but as the president, this is my second year. And uh, yes, we are just volunteering there because in Slovakia, uh, maybe in some other countries, uh, you know, you can um, gain some money from the government to support financially mm -hmm. your association, but in Slovakia, uh, this is not the case now. So yeah, we are having um, approximately uh, 10 people in board. So uh, yeah, we are trying to uh, focus on these activities together. And yeah, we are volunteering. And I hope I have answered <laughs> your question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, thank you. So now when we talk about uh, this um, like uh, current situation, so uh, do you come up with uh, so maybe video conferences or anything for your members? Yeah, um, as you said, with um, social distancing, mm -hmm. uh, we have to um, find new ways to um, do things for our members. And uh, the main things we are doing is uh, to bring them information 
about the global situation, about the COVID-19 in general, but also about um, IBD um, specific information. And we are organizing, um, I mean, we are used to, um, um, to organize local meetings between uh, people and to carry on doing this kind of, of stuff. We are organizing um, online uh, meetings uh, with tools like uh, uh, Zoom or GIST or GAGC or Skype and stuff like that. Uh, and excuse to, me, uh, excuse yeah. me just for interrupting you. Uh, so do you organize this kind of video conferences so also together with the doctors or some social workers or is it just like uh, to come up with information from association to members? Um, these video conferences is, uh, I mean, for now only to meet uh, people to uh, uh, get in touch with other uh, members to uh, replace local meetings uh, physically, uh, local okay. meetings. But we are in touch with uh, gastroenterologists. Um, we um, we have made uh, two interviews of gastroenterologists to answer the main questions uh, IBD patients have in mind about the current situation, uh, about their disease, and about how to manage it, uh, um, uh, should they stop their medication or not, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, so yeah, we use this kind of tool to uh, uh, also to, uh, to, to stay in touch with uh, um, medical care. And uh, also for the association itself to uh, to work with each other um, uh, with phone, mails, and uh, uh, online tools for a video conference. Yeah. Yeah, this is the most important probably nowadays to support each other and be in contact at least by phone, yeah. email, or social media. Yeah. Uh, also, we have uh, come up with uh, come up with uh, these recommendations or. Uh, measures from the doctors and uh, gastroenterologist company but until now we are just having some articles and uh, you know in the text form but we are also working on some videos so hopefully we will uh, do it uh, as soon as possible but uh, i hope that also this kind of video so um slovakia versus france so regarding this situation i believe patients and covid also this is kind of uh, help and support for IBD patients, at least in our country, so Slovakia and France. Uh, good. Uh, I just wanted to uh, come back uh, to the general situation nowadays. Can you please tell me uh, if uh, uh, your country is in lockdown, how long or what are you doing at home and so on? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are in, uh, in, lockdown, in uh, lockdown since uh, March. Uh, uh, 17th mm -hmm. and um, the um, official information uh, for now is that we'll be in lockdown uh, until um, May 11th okay. and uh, at this date we'll start to uh, remove the, lo the uh, lockdown but uh, step by step uh, we don't know already uh, how we will do it uh, will it be um, regarding your age or your uh, uh, professional situation, uh, we don't know. Uh, it's something to be um, um, uh, to, to, to be thing by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have this uh, milestone, uh, May 11th, and uh, it should be the, the beginning um, of the removing lockdown. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when you um can you please tell us what is the situation in the hospitals, what is the situation in ambulances? Do doctors have enough you know, equipment, uh, gloves, respirators, masks, ventilators? What is the situation like that? Um, it's a tough situation because uh, hospitals don't have enough uh, equipment. Um, the major um, lack of equipment is about uh, masks and uh, respirators too. Uh, we have also a lack of uh, overalls, uh, like to protect uh, your, uh, your body. Mm -hmm. um, it's because uh, France don't have any more 
um, um, stock um, of masks. So we have to order them. Mm -hmm. And uh, as every country, every country in the world are ordering uh, medical equipment, um, we have to deal with that. And we have uh, started uh, rece uh, receiving some equipments from mm -hmm. uh, China. And, uh, but yeah, for now we don't have enough equipments. And we have also a lack of um, beds in uh, intensive uh, care. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the, the, um, the main uh, issue is to um, uh, get, uh, to, to spread the number of people who have to go in uh, intensive care in order to have enough beds for everybody mm -hmm. and also to um, buy enough equipment to protect uh, medical care workers mm -hmm. yeah. okay thank you what yes, about the uh, slovak situation about yeah that? definitely uh, i just wanted to say that it's really really similar also uh we has we have a shortage of uh, many um protective uh, materials or yeah, protective masks respirators even uh, the overalls and yeah so hopefully it will you know be solved as soon as possible and that uh, we could you know cover all uh, needs and mm -hmm. what about uh, when we are talking about uh, masks and whilst for citizens, for people? Um, what is the situation with that? Um, the official uh, message from the government is that uh, general population don't need masks, um, except for uh, people um, working in, um, I mean, uh, people who are in contact with uh, the population, uh, for, okay. for example, uh, policemen mm -hmm. or uh, people uh, working in grocery stores. Uh, for these people, they, uh, they, uh, they have to wear a mask, but uh, at the beginning, they, um, we, we didn't have enough masks because even for medical care, they, they were uh, not enough uh, equipment. So um, the um, emergency was uh, to send these equipments to medical care and after uh, workers in contact with uh, the general population. But now the government is changing its uh, message and now they are saying um, that when we will uh, stop the, the uh, lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, we will, they, they will um, give access uh, to the general population, uh, mask, uh, but we don't know yet if it will be equipment, if these uh, equipments will be uh, distributed to to population or if we will have to, to buy them, we don't know yet. Okay, so um, uh, did I understand properly that when you go out, you don't mm -hmm. have to wear a mask, so this is not the rule? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have some people uh, who are lucky enough to, to, to get a mask. So you, you can see many people wearing a, a mask. But the official message is you don't need it for now. Okay, this is really interesting because in Slovakia, the, it is a restric restriction to go out only with the mask. And um, yeah, because in Slovakia nowadays, uh, every mother every woman every girl uh, who is at home uh, is suing even mm. the uh, masks from the you know fabric um so i think when i now um, you know think about it that uh, probably we have a little bit <laughs> more masks because we are just uh making them at home and suing and sometimes you know what what i'm really proud of that even uh really the public people from home they are trying to deliver these homemade masks even to policemen to doctors and uh, this is what i have to you know be proud of <laughs> yeah we have the, the, the same thing in, in france mm -hmm. uh, we have um, people uh, sewing masks or men masks and um, we have many tutorials on the internet on youtube to make your own mask uh, 
and uh, we have um, also uh, companies, uh, French companies, who uh, have started to produce masks. Uh, um, and we have also many people um, who are kind of volunteering to make some food, to bring it to hospital uh, for uh, medical care. Mm-hmm. Um, because they don't have time to to cook and stuff like that, so um, the population is like, uh, if there is something I can do, maybe it's not um, a big stuff, but if I can cook um, for maybe ten people and bring into the hospital, you know, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a, it's a small thing, but it's the addition of these small things mm-hmm. which can be a lot. That's, that's nice, yeah. And uh, just the last thing about uh, kind of general information about the uh, situation with COVID in France. Uh, do you think that your government provides real numbers and information about the situation in your country, but as well as worldwide? And is the communi- communication via TV, radio, uh, social media, or how, how does it work? Mm. Um, I think in France we have uh, a good information about the number of cases and dead people and stuff like that. At the beginning, we 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 had only the death from hospital, mm-hmm. and uh, since maybe one week, uh, we have also the death from uh, retirement homes mm-hmm. because uh, we have many um, people uh, dying because yeah. of uh, COVID-19 in, uh, in this kind of, uh, of place. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the situation worldwide, um, I think we have also good information. Um, the only thing, um, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that we don't uh, hear many things about Africa uh, mm-hmm. for now. And um, I mean, we have many information about uh, what the situation in the nearest countries in Europe. I mean, uh, Spain, uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, Belgium, uh, UK, uh, also in the US. Um, We have also information in uh, uh, Asia, Mm -hmm. uh, China, South Korea, Taiwan, but we don't no very many information about Africa and I think it would be a big issue uh, in this uh, in this continent but otherwise uh, yeah we we have uh, I think we have all the information I mean the main information okay yeah uh, I'm glad then that uh, you can you know rely on this information because uh, you know probably not each country is um, giving all information uh, you know or you remember this case with china i i am not a specialist so i'm not going to talk about like if it is true or not but we heard that uh, you know chinese uh, government they didn't give us uh, the real numbers but this is some um, other story so we don't have to talk about it but very good point sebastian about africa yes i agree and i also don't know why we don't uh, hear anything about them or just we like the information and mm. yeah as far as the social system health uh, system there is probably not a high level i don't want yeah. to know about the you know circumstances and consequences of uh this uh, covid situation so uh, just yeah. fingers crossed for them mm. good uh when we uh come back to us <laughs> i be the patient yeah uh so uh okay then probably uh this is the same in france as in slovakia the two we are receiving information from the government but i hope that it is also from the gastroenterological association and doctors themselves so um and you also mentioned that you provide this information via video conferences uh again are you satisfied with the information do you rely on your uh, gastroenterologist, uh, are you in the you know, regular contact with them? Do they provide enough information for you? Um, yeah, we, I mean, IBD patients are, uh, I mean, not every IBD patient is in direct contact with their gastroenterologist. But um, as I said earlier, um, we interviewed 
uh, to gastroenterologists mm -hmm. to um, uh, ask them uh, all the top questions uh, people are asking. Um, and uh, gastroenterologists gave us also, I mean, in the association, um, uh, the, the good practices you know, about, about uh, medication, about um, uh, are you um, um, more um, a risk person to, to catch COVID-19 and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, we, we I, I think we have uh, enough information uh, coming from gastroenterologists, and we we don't have information coming directly. Uh, I mean, at the IBD patient level, we don't have direct information uh, coming from uh, gastroenterologist uh, associations. Okay. But uh, thanks to uh, the French IBD Association. We, we catch up this information to deliver it to our members. Very good, super. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, again, this is very same here also in Slovakia. We are all mm -hmm. in contact with doctors, with the Slovak Gastroenterological Association. But um, in Slovakia, we are also in contact uh, with uh, some other patient organizations. Uh, we know we try to share information, to share uh, you know, experience and support each other. So, uh, is it also uh, this case in uh, France? Uh, do you exchange this information with other patient organizations? Yeah, uh, we are in contact with other associations. Uh, we are part of uh, an association which gathered um, different uh, chronic um, illness, okay. uh, chronic disease. Um, and so uh, the association has uh, a meeting every uh, Tuesday, um, or Thursday, sorry, to, to share information um, and to share experiences and stuff like that. So yeah, we, we are updated with our associations uh, on a weekly level and maybe even on a daily uh, uh, level if there is something uh, new. And this is also the proof that we exchange information even uh, among countries like this now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's really uh, great. Uh, so when we uh, finally come to really the IBD patient, uh, what do you think from your point of view, you are also the IBD patient, uh, what does IBD patient need the most nowadays? What do you think? Mm. Um, thank you for this question because we have um, made a, a survey um, less than two weeks ago, and we have um, around 2,000 people answering uh, this survey. Um, we send it only to our members, uh, so it's uh, 2,000 uh, IBD patients. And um, I've picked some uh, some figures about this um, this uh, this survey. Um, the the most, uh, the, the biggest concern uh, for IBD patients is to have uh, reliable information uh, about COVID-19 and uh, about IBD uh, perspective, IBD patient perspective. Uh, we have 57% um, uh, of people um, seeking for um, um, reliable information. And we have also 37% uh, people which, um, who wish to have access to relaxation sessions, you know, to manage stress and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also 27% uh, who wish to have access to physical activity sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also a third of people um, who want to have uh, information about their rights um, and uh, all to prepare their return to work after the lockdown. That's really an uh, interesting survey. Thank you very much for sharing and definitely uh, we can learn again from you and uh, this is a good idea to also ask mm. our patients or members. Mm. Uh, what uh, um, I must and do say... You have, uh, uh, in the uh, Slovak Association, do you have information about what is uh, the, the main needs of uh, your uh, IBD patients? Yeah, uh, as I said, we don't have any uh, information from the survey, but uh, I mean, like in the 
formal way, but definitely um, we have asked and we are still asking, uh, what do you need, how do you cope with this situation? And this is also the same as in your country that yes, people really need the relevant information and updated information. On the other hand, I must say that, you know, um, there is really a lot of information and we are somehow fed up with that because you really want to just, um, you know, uh, cope with that and uh, try to go on and to think about your physical health, your mental health and uh, how to cope with that. So definitely, as you said, that uh, there is uh, a need to have access to relaxation sessions or physical activities. Definitely, this is the same with us. Uh, what is also interesting is that, um, uh, yeah, a lot of IVD patients, uh, they have Slovakia problems like, okay, um, I am working, but uh, I can't stay at home because of IBD, because this is probably not according to legislative uh, or the law. So uh, they have to go to work. And maybe this is really the issue we need to talk about with the, uh, with the, um, what's a government or association or institution uh, that, uh, you know, supports the rights of patients because it's really um, like sad when you um, are the chronic patient, you are IBD patient and uh, you, you know, could be infected uh and you just really need to go to work and you can't stay at home so this yeah. is probably the issue we have to solve in slovakia yeah mm. Mm. and uh, what about the cure what about the medicine a biological cure do you have uh is there any shortage or uh do you have any anything that uh, you miss or mm. should it be all right um, for what I know, uh, I don't think we have uh, a shortage for uh, pills or uh, treatment you can uh, have at the pharmacy. And um, it's also the, um, the, the same for biological treatment you have at hospital. Um, we have also asked uh, in the survey uh, about that and uh, for, biologi for uh, biological treatments. And um, um, IBD patients say us that 79% uh, of uh, their treatments at hospital were maintained. Um, the other ones, 20% um, were just uh, consulted or uh, rescheduled later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so when the patient is on biological treatment, Mm -hmm. uh, does he or she have to go directly to the IBD center or to the um, to the hospital, or is it possible somehow to, you know, provide this uh, treatment directly uh, to his or her home, or how does it work in France? Mm. Um, for uh, if you need an infusion for your uh, bi biological treatment, you have to go to the hospital. Okay. Uh, you can do it uh, at home. And um, so I'm, I don't think uh, this uh, has changed, uh, even with uh, the current situation. But what you can do uh, in some cases, you can have access to uh, a taxi to bring you to the hospital and bring you back, uh, bring you back uh, home so that you don't have to take uh, public transport and stuff like that. So, yeah. so who does pay for the taxi then? Uh, the uh, risk care. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for this very important information for Slovak patients. <laughs> okay, and uh, okay, and was uh, was it uh, any change, um, any break um, at the beginning, or so we can say about, uh, or we can talk about 17 of March because uh, you mentioned this date as the beginning of your lockdown in France. Uh, so was it some, somehow that uh, IBD centers or gastroenterological ambulances, they uh, closed for a short period of time and then are reopened? Uh, because this is why, why I'm asking, because in Slovakia it happened, unfortunately, that some IBD centers for biological treatment, even ambulances, they closed. Um, no. Honestly, I don't know why or yet yeah, there are some definitely mm. and there are some reasons probably they had to you know uh, disinfect everything and so on 
but it was a little bit chaotic for IBD patients because they didn't know what to do. The phone was only ringing, nobody answered. And also uh, you had the, the term, the date for uh, biological uh, treatment and you just couldn't go there because they were closed. Mm. Uh, uh, fortunately, the situation now is much more better. Uh, they are, we are working again, but yeah, it was a little bit stressy for Slovak patients. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I'm, uh, I'm surprised that uh, ambulances and uh, medical centers can uh, close in this kind of situation. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have that in, uh, in France. Um, I mean, it's almost the, the contrary. For example, we have uh, retired uh, doctors mm -hmm. who, who uh, offer to go back to work to help uh, um, hospitals uh, to deal with uh, all the sick people um, going to hospital. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I don't have heard about uh, ambulances or hospitals and, or uh medical centers uh closing during uh during uh i mean since uh, the beginning of the uh of the lockdown yeah uh good let's uh, now focus on probably the last two questions but maybe the most important for ibd patients and it is uh what are ibd patients doing nowadays in france at home what are they doing are they you know generally cooking or sewing or what, what, what are they doing? Um, I think they are doing, uh, I mean, the same things as uh, everybody else, mm -hmm. uh, like cooking, sleeping, watching Netflix, uh, sewing for uh, the ones who <laughs> uh, know how to sew, um, playing board games, and I don't know, uh, reading uh, books and doing physical activity uh, yeah mm, I think uh, I don't think IBD people are doing things different than uh, other people um, I mean everyone has to fill the time at home so yeah every every idea is good to take to yeah. uh, to not be bored yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely uh, I hope you? That everybody is, you know, turning up and cleaning the stuff because you never had time for or had time for that. So now yeah. uh, you can't excuse yourself. You just need to do it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And did you have um, any problem? Because now it just reminds me um, reminds me that uh, uh, during Easter time it was really nice and sunny weather, and mm. we really wanted to go outside and maybe to. The nature or maybe two cottages or weekend houses we have but actually it was not possible in Slovakia if your weekend house was out of your district where you live uh, so you know we were a little bit uh, again stressed um, because we had to stay at home uh, was it somehow like that during Easter time because it was like public holiday in Slovakia so I'm not sure how was it in France mm. Uh, we have also public holidays for uh, for Easter um, because the, uh, we, I mean France is a Catholic tradition country. Uh, even if uh, the church is separated from the government, you know, um, but there there were no differences for Easter uh, than to other time in lockdown. Uh, we were not allowed to to go out. I mean except for uh, going to grocery stores to go to work if you have to uh, to go working or um, if you need to go to the pharmacy or if you have a medical appointment and stuff like that but otherwise i mean just for easter there was no exceptions and uh, does it mean when that you are not allowed to go out does it mean that if they meet you and you don't, you know, prove somehow like, okay, I go to work or okay, I go to a supermarket or okay, I just go somewhere, I don't know, to the pharmacy or to the doctor. So uh, can you get a fine or how does it work? Um, when you want to, to go outside, um, you have to, to, to fill um, a form uh, to declare um, why you are going out. 
uh, if it's for uh, groceries, if it's for uh, going to work or uh, going to medical stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you have to, and you have to do it uh, every time. Yeah. And uh, you have to do it just before you are going outside because you have to write down the uh, day and um, the hour. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we have to do it every time. Okay, but do you fill in this form online or just on the piece of paper or? Um, at the beginning, uh, it was only with a piece of paper. Yeah, mm-hmm. You you could uh, print it uh, from uh, the uh, government uh, website, okay. or you can write it down from a blank page. Mm-hmm. But uh, since maybe two weeks, you can do it online. Uh, you just fill uh, some blanks, and uh, it generates uh, the form uh, directly on your smartphone and stuff like that. Oh, wow, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised because in Slovakia we actually can't imagine to be, you know, under the control this way. But mm. uh, I'm not saying which is good or bad. Uh, this mm, is a yeah. restriction, so definitely you reach to follow it. Mm. But really I can't imagine. So maybe this uh, will be a very good, uh, you know, um, opinion and very good idea for Slovak people who uh, sometimes, you know, they... Um, don't agree with the restrictions and they go out with children and of course they say okay i'm wearing the mask so what uh, should you know what could happen so um, yeah thank you very much for sharing this important information definitely and when talking uh, talking about the ibd patient uh, regarding nowadays what do you think or do you have any information any data what is the biggest fear of IBD patient or, or mm. of your member of your organization? Yeah, um, it's also something uh, we learned from the survey uh, we have sent to our members. Um, 70% of uh, answers are telling that uh, they fear to get sick uh, with COVID-19. Yeah. And... Uh, around 70% of people are uh, afraid to develop a severe form of the of the disease and um, we have i mean the second most important fear is to go to hospital um, because of that uh, it's sev- uh, 37% of uh, of answers and um, we have also a third of patients who are telling they are afraid to uh, to to get in relapse with their BD. Um, also, not being able to reach the gastroenterologist if they have a, if they have a problem with their IBD. I see. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, again, uh, it is really similar also to. Uh, our members or IBD mm-hmm. patients, yes, we have also a fear like what can happen if uh, I will get, uh, you know, COVID and what will, you know, be the case and so on. But, uh, you know, IBD patients in Slovakia, some of them who work, they also have a fear like, okay, oh, will, will it be able or will I be able to continue to work? Uh, or, or will my company need to uh, close so I will lo- lose my job? No, because in Slovakia, as probably everywhere, a lot of companies, a lot of uh, factories, uh, mm-hmm. they have closed down and some uh, like small companies, they even had to fire um, a lot of employees. So this mm-hmm. is also the fear probably not only uh, of IBD patients, but generally uh, people in Slovakia. Yeah. 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 yeah, I see. So, but um, to, you know, finish this very productive and very nice discussion, uh, we should really be uh, very positive about, um, like generally about IBD patients, because I think we are, you know, all restrictions and measures um, are very, mm, closely and we really try our best uh, to follow it and uh, you know to protect our health because it's only about our health about our families 
and uh, we just really want to uh, come to the end of this uh, situation with COVID and to um, continue with our uh, very beautiful lives that we had and yeah. hopefully we will again come uh, to that uh, and maybe we will be even you know uh, wiser we will be um, uh, more more flexible with some things we didn't uh, you know understand or we didn't use so Mm. Thank you very much once again, Bastien. It was very nice talking to you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for the invitation. It was very nice to, to have this talk. Yeah. Yeah, you are welcome. So to everybody, to all patients, even from Slovakia or France or worldwide, um, uh, we fingers crossed uh, for us. Thank you very much for watching. And please, if you don't uh, speak English, then you can uh, see under this uh, post the uh, translated questions and answers of this discussion. So thank you very much. Thank you.